Hey there, PM students. In this video, I'm going to help you get a pass on your upcoming ACCA exam. We are going to rock regression analysis. I'll take you through question Van Hosp from March, June 2024. We'll do part A, the difficult calculations around regression analysis. Hey, if you want more videos like this, check the links below. Check out my website. I've got revision courses, more solutions to help you get a pass. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, PM team, let's jump into this spreadsheet workout of epic proportions. Checking the requirements here on part A. We've got 11 marks of spreadsheet love. 20% roughly of passing the exam comes from this requirement, part A. And they're asking us to use regression analysis. This is a headache with a calculator, but in the spreadsheet, we can make quick work of it. We can move efficiently and build up some buffer time for some of the more difficult questions in section A. So guys, I'm not gonna take you through the big story. If you haven't read it yet, pause the video, go into the ACCA practice platform, find March, June, 2024, find this question, Ven Hosp. Give it a try. Roll the video when you are done. Team, welcome back. First thing I'm going to do here, this is new. We can now copy paste from the story, from the scenario panel in the left. We can paste it right in. And that's a big time saver. So look at this, we've got the sum of x, we've got the sum of y, we've got the sum of x squared, sum of y squared, and the sum of x, y. So we can make quick work of this. I now open up the formula sheet because I do not have these memorized. And I remember, first thing is to do b. So, we'll get B. And I'm going to make one line for the numerator, one line for the denominator, then I'll do the B calculation, one over the other. Once I've got the B calculation, I can do step two, the A variable, Maybe we should make those lowercase so it matches the variable layout in the formula. Not a big deal. I'm doing it like that. Step three, let's now set our linear equation. And now step four, let us solve for y. We're going to solve for y when x is equal to 1, 1, 4. Now that our template is set up, we are ready to rock. Let's just build up this equation following the formula that we found in the formula sheet. So the numerator, so that will be equal to that 16n, which we can find here in the left panel. Let's use parentheses to preserve the order of operations. So that will be 16 multiplied by the sum of x, y minus the sum of x multiplied by the sum of y. So now the denominator, that's going to be equal to that 16n multiplied by the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared wrapped in parentheses to the power of two. So make sure you do this correctly. We've got to grab this one and raise that to the power of two. Now, next step, divide this one over this one. 
and we get the 295.93. I already applied some formatting there, so it looks nice and pretty. Let's move on now and do the A variable. So we'll take the sum of Y divide that by 16 and then we will subtract from that the B we need the B now multiplied by the sum of X divided by the N, which is the 16. We get a negative two, 7, 2, 2, 1, and some change. I was expecting a positive number there. We got a negative number. C'est la vie. It's correct. I'm going to go with that negative number that we have. Apply a little tactical formatting here. Now, step three. We can set our equation, y is equal to the negative 7221.15 plus 2995.93x. There wouldn't be a mark for that potentially, but I just like to be organized. I know what I'm doing. In theory, I could even just make assumed numbers for all of these variables above, and I would get full credit when I did the solving at step four. So now we can say this is equal to the A variable plus the B variable multiplied by 1, 1, 4, and we get 26. 514.83. Again, a little tactical light formatting. Looking awesome. Guys, five marks earned lickety split. Loving the spreadsheet. Okay, let's tell the marking team what we're doing. This is part A. I could do a little bit of light cleanup. Again, there'd be no marks earned for this, but just to keep things presentable for you guys watching this video. There we go. Let's now go to it's part A1. Let's do part A2. Let's carefully check out the requirement to part A2. And they want us to assume that the answer to A1 gave us a figure of 30,000 expected staff days. They do that for a reason. That's so there's no double jeopardy in play. If you didn't know how to do A1, you could still use this assumed number to continue with A2. So what do we need to do with this 30,000 days? We've got to get the forecast revenue, staff costs, and gross profit. So step one, let's get the revenue. Step two, we need the staff costs. And we subtract one from the other and we get a profit. Now, if we go into the story here, we can find that the revenue is 16 per hour. They work eight hours a day. So the, so the revenue is going to be straightforward. That's going to be 30,000 days multiplied by $16 revenue multiplied by eight hours a day. And we get 3,840,000. I'm going to use a little tactical formatting here just so I ensure no mistakes. Then I read, right, that the pay is 11.25 per hour. So I can copy that down to the next line. 
All I've got to do is change out the 16 to a negative 11.25. And I read further and I picked up this additional tax. So we're paying some kind of a, uh, the employer has to cover 10% of the contributions. So now, We have some kind of a government fee, a tax, I'll just call that. That will be equal to this one multiplied by 0 0.10%. 10%. Profit, guys, that will be equal to the sum of the lines above. That's an easy four marks, probably one mark for each line. So guys, I'm liking part A2. We made quick work of that. All right, team, let's move on to part A3. And we need to find the R value, the correlation coefficient. So I look at the formula page and we've got that big formula again. I'd be hesitant to try this with a calculator, but in the spreadsheet, I love it. So. I'm going to grab my variables one more time to save on the, the scrolling. I need a numerator. I need a denominator. Now look at the formulas side by side. Isn't that cool? The numerators are the same. So I can just do an equal sign, grab that numerator from upstairs. And the denominator here, this is a pretty big, big equation, so I'm going to do this quite carefully. I'm going to use lots of parentheses. First thing I'll do is get n, which is the 16, multiplied by the sum of n squared. Right there. Equal sign would help. Multiplied by the sum of x squared. Minus the sum of x squared in brackets to the power of 2. And this is the first half of that equation. So I will carefully wrap that in two more parentheses. And I'll multiply this by that 16 multiplied by the sum of y squared, carefully grabbing that one, close that out, minus the sum of y in brackets to the power of 2. Okay, now I will close this bunch out with two parentheses. And now I've got to do a final square root. So I'm going to grab the whole thing that I did with the third bracket, and I'm going to raise this to the power of 1 over 2. Again, very important to put that in brackets, otherwise we'd get the wrong result. So there we have it, the denominator, that's a beast of, of an equation. I double check everything. I'm loving the colors to show me how things are related. I hit return, and I need a drum roll. R will be equal to one divided by the other. And we have a figure that's in between negative one and positive one. We've got an 80. So I'm thinking that looks nice. Rounding it off. Ladies and gentlemen, we just made quick work of part A. We've got A1, A2, A3. Make sure you try this a couple of times. Make sure that you have this spreadsheet technique in your muscle memory. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found this debrief of part A useful. If you'd like to check out my answer to part B, please click on the link below. You can get access to all of my videos there. Ladies and gents, good luck on your upcoming PM exam.